Welcome! This video was recorded with Gustavo from Rocky Marciano Brazil. Go check out his channel. Also make sure to visit my second boxing channel, Legends of Boxing in Color, where you can watch remastered boxing classics in color. And let's get on with the video. He did something to himself. He knew what, nine years old? Uh, he could see he was going to be a very poor grown-up man. Dropped the high school. He could speak Italian, but he couldn't write. He knew that he didn't want that kind of poverty anymore. And he had to do something about it. As he went out to play with his friends, uh, mostly baseball, he was... Marciano was a baseball player as a kid. He was a baseball player as a boxer. And he was a baseball player as a retired yeah. boxer. Yeah, his dad was a was a was a shoemaker and Yeah. Like if you instantly start boxing there's more money back in the days if is if you were an amateur uh, baseball player in that way if you could fight that, you could yeah. instantly make money in that way. But even if you uh, don't if, make it you can be like a, a journeyman or somewhat you can make money. Yeah, uh, uh, even as a journeyman, Marciano never wanted to box. Uh, even as a journeyman, because uh, as a journeyman, he would have uh, some sense. Boxing never crossed his mind. This is hard to believe because the guy wasn't brilliant, what we nowadays call uh, intelligent. But he had some sense of uh, awareness. Like more, more, more street smart, I think, than, than, than book smart. Is, is this what you're say, trying to say? His uh, surroundings, uh, everything, houses, the streets, uh, clothes, friends, um, food. There was a red light saying, man, do something for your life because nobody's going to. And he didn't even know what. He was doing bad in school. Like I was uh, telling you, after playing outside, sun or snow, playing and running, and then he went home and in his backyard, they had a tree. He was doing chin-ups to make his arms stronger, and he was always uh, running, uh, although he never became a fast runner, kept him from uh, being accepted in Chicago Cubs and uh, Red Sox. Marciano got a kind of embarrassed when he was caught training mm -hmm. because he couldn't uh, quite explain why. Hey, hey kid, you are 11 like us. Uh, we are hungry, we go home. And you are running. You are doing chin-ups, uh, carrying rocks, and you want to beat us. You want to be the best uh, on the park. But he has an eye on the future. And uh, it's very hard to believe people telling that they ended up believing that this guy had something in the back of his mind. He just didn't know quite what. But uh, he knew he was good at sports. He had fun at sports. And he had to do something for his future. But he couldn't put all the pieces together. Oh, I, th I think that's very interesting that he, I mean, the sports came natural, but in a way that he didn't know in which sport he would excel. And then he tried boxing and at 24, I think. And it's incredible what the speed he developed his skills. And a lot of people, they even after like four years of boxing, they wouldn't look this. I mean, he looks clumsy even as a champion, but he has so many great fighting instincts that many people that fight for years never have and it's very interesting to me that this kind of puzzle all comes together and fits perfectly into this time period there are two among others uh things that should be pointed out first yeah he had a natural frame heritage from his mother He was strong by nature, uh, born uh, a strong boy. He has this uh, natural born uh, instinct for sports, but 
he had an intention. He said, I was a kid, I loved sports, I loved baseball. Somehow I knew I should take care of my future. By no means wanted to be poor like my father and my mother and my neighbors and my friends that I should do something about it. One, one of the things I think it's uh, kind of like many box, boxes like of the time period and many afters, they have like, a, I'd say a similar story. Like the sport was more focused around America and there was like more poverty in this in that time period. You kind of could say in the end, it made so many great uh, sports heroes and different characters in the sport. Like you have such a big talent pool because they they just this is the only way of, of, of coming out of this poverty and they excel at it and they try everything like nowadays you don't have that many talents I would say in the sport and another thing I thought interesting what you said um, said that Marciano wasn't like the fastest uh, sprinter he couldn't he could uh, run very long and He would run often and stuff, but he couldn't get to the speed. But uh, it's clear that Marciano has this muscle type where it's not meant for super explosive um, activities, but more for stamina. I've just watched, uh, rewatched this he had a lot of his fights uh, yesterday. The way he just completely outworked as a Charles, he he was. Uh, behind at the start getting outboxed by by a smarter guy but in the end he just outworked the guy who's better him than him in in many departments he's just built like that this muscle type in a way yeah you are right about uh, all that uh, poverty that drove many young guys to whatever kind of sport they could get into. They had no proper education. They had uh, destroyed families. His father fought in the First World War. Poverty drove young guys to sports. It was uh, almost uh, 100% uh, the only way out. Or criminality. Yeah. Like many, many, many fighters of the day came out of... Uh... Like they learned it either on the street or in prison, in a way. Like yeah. I think that many right. guys of the of the uh, Mike Tyson era that, which were which there were many like guys that came straight out of prison and I don't know fought Tyson and stuff. There, are many crazy figures back then. Yeah, Tyson was 13. Can you imagine something like this? Tyson was 13 years old. He had. 40, uh, we say he was in jail for 40 times. One day he came home, his clothes uh, with blood all around, and his mother came, oh, my dear son, what happened to you? And his uncle said, do not make your mother suffer because the mess you do outside. And then after they calmed down, his uncle, he, he was crippled. He couldn't move one hand, but he was able to make a punching bag in the cellar for Marciano and said, beat the left and then the right and don't stop and do that for hours. He kept doing this for years until his one meter 78 uh, were too high to uh, stand up straight. So he had to crouch. You can see this in all of his fights. He was clumsy, all right. He many times looked like he was fighting in a bar, not uh, on the ring. Older guys that uh, used to play in the park uh, in the near of his home, and they gave some money to another guy that could box. The only thing this guy had to do was to look for the balls that flew away to the woods and bring them back. And one day, uh, he, Marciano and his friends, they were there. The name of this guy is Julie Durham. And he was not a bad guy, but he could box. And they were in the woods watching the game. Then uh, one ball came flying over and they, they hit the ball. And they said, no, we, we saw no ball in here. So this Julian guy, 
He came and said, I know you have the ball. There's no way uh, I wouldn't find a white ball here, the grass. He went after one of his friends. And Marciano, he would never allow such thing. Although he has never, ever started a fight in his early age. But this guy came to his friends, grabbed him and said, give, back here, give me back the ball. So Marciano uh, jumped at the guy and got beaten up. And he stand up again and the guy could box and tag it his face. Grown up men, they came to watch a fight. They didn't, didn't stop it. They wanted to see the square, small boy against the, this guy was a, a black guy, good boxer. Uh, they later became friends and uh, this guy beat him uh, until he couldn't stand up anymore. But he stood up uh, all dizzy and throw an overhand and Jolly Durham fell down like a log. Boom! And after that, they became friends. <laughs> okay. What a story. I mean, like, you wouldn't think of Marciano having these uh, street fights. I mean, even if it didn't start, it's, but he comes across he, in the interviews. He's always this kind of a bit shy, I think. And yeah. he always is kind of this humble and shy as, as this character, I think. And, and I don't think that it's an act. I think he's really like that in a way. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. Later on, he, he said something about it. He, he had his worries about his future. Sylvester and Easy Gold, his two best friends, uh, were talking to girls. And Marciano, as a clumsy and shy boy, he didn't go. He stood behind thinking, ah. I don't know what to say. I cannot talk to girls. I am clumsy. I'm stupid. So he didn't go. Then some other guys came to beat his friends. He destroyed them alone. That's, that's a friend you need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, after beating Julie Durham, the, all the neighborhood started calling him King of the Hill. They knew that, uh, okay, don't mess with this guy. Because if he hits you, uh, he doesn't hurt you. He puts you to sleep. Um, I, I've seen he he was in the in the army in in nineteen forty three, I think. 40, yeah, forty three. Uh, I've read that on on box rec. It's, it's very interesting. I, I I think. Yeah, not as a volunteer, but as a drafted. Drafty is when you get that letter, and I'm sorry, my boy. You have, uh, you have to go. You have to go. <laughs> oh, no. So he signed up for the engineering battalion in order to try to stay in the rear with the gear. In the rear with the gear is... It's well, safe there. <laughs> safer. Safer. Much safer. I don't want to be on the up. front in the, in the world war. It's not good. And it, yeah. And if you stop to think, it says a lot about the character. Uh, he wasn't crazy to go to the front. Yeah. He wanted to be in the rear with the gear. And then they had the, this sports program. He gave his name to, he signed up for boxing, for baseball, of course. So when the soldiers come back from battles, they would have time to bet uh, chocolate against cigarettes that this guy will win, win this bout. So it was uh, some kind of distraction. So he was more a uh, sportsman in the army during the war than uh, a warrior. I believe he never uh, shot one single round by the time he was in Europe. He was in the rear all the time. And, yeah, smart uh, move, of, of course. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of character. He didn't have this violent nature. A friend of his in the army, he had no talent for sports, but he was smarter, Ali Colombo. And he said, Rocky, uh, forget about baseball. Uh, you are slow, way too slow. Oh, yeah, but I can beat strong. Yeah, but you cannot run. Let go. Okay, I'll try American football. Again, you are slow. I know you since we were born. You touch people, they sleep. You should go for boxing. No way, man. I'm hate boxing i i like joe lewis uh, yeah joe lewis is my hero but i like to listen in the radio 
uh, as he fights. And then uh, this guy, Ali Colombo, he didn't disengage from army after the war. There were not many jobs available. He was a sergeant, so he stayed in the army. So he had where to sleep. He had three meals a day and some cash. So he saved his cash and made a call to a manager, important manager in New York, and said, uh, I have here a friend of mine and lied like a MF. My God, uh, this, you, you should see this guy fighting. He is the guy. He is, he is the next big thing. <laughs> he lied. Uh, he didn't know he wasn't lying. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that should say that great input because he didn't know how right he how, was. How didn't he then um, meet like his trainer, uh, Charlie Goldman? Like, how did he meet him? All while uh, was the the big shot. He was the the guy. I have no problem in saying that all while had connections with the mafia. They would squeeze. They will extort, they will take money from any athlete uh, they could put their hands on. And boxing was growing up in America because uh, after Joe Lewis, uh, not many great talents came. The climax was Schmeling and Lewis. After that, uh, you never saw... He had no... Um... Like an exciting guy, like people would watch, like like yeah. a Marciano type. Yeah. And then uh, his childhood friend, uh, Ali Colombo, still a uh, post-war sergeant, lied, lied about uh, Marciano skills. This guy, this all wild guy, said, uh, okay, uh, and make an appointment. Uh, and said that, don't make me lose my time. I have thousands of brawlers like you, you better be good. Ali, what have you done? Nothing. I'll pay the ticket and I can pay. He had some savings for, from the army. You talk to this old wild guy and the guy was uh, was very, very unpolite. Uh, I'm not a punk here. He had, he needed, he had the need uh, of a trainer. 30, he met Charlie Goldman. He was a Uh, a Jew, uh, not very tall, and he had experience as a boxer and lots of experience as a trainer. So one was the manager and the other the, the trainer. They were ill-treated by while They kind of had a fight. Uh, Marciano said to Colombo, man, you bring me all the way up to New York to listen to this SOB shouting at me uh, for no reason. Uh, he said, calm down, man, calm down. And then they were going downstairs and uh, Wilde said, uh, hey, punk, and gave him a $20 bill. Uh, go get yourself some decent meal. It was a beginning. I cannot remember right now, but uh, in this very day, in the first day or in the second day he was there, they put him to fight against a guy. They just didn't tell that the guy was a very experienced guy. And Marciano, he knew nothing about the art of boxing. He could fight, he couldn't box. And he tagged this guy. He got hit a thousand times. But uh, the way, the power he used to tag this guy, when he finally found the distance, made Goldman think, wow, he's still standing. And he hurt my guy. I'm training this guy. He's a skillful boxer and he hurt him. And he's still standing. He's not afraid. So Wild said, uh, no, this is a brawler, another tough guy. So in the end, did Goldstein like was was um, convinced first before for the manager of the qualities? Yeah. 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 He asked him to give Marciano a second chance. And then uh, things went on with guys uh, his level. 
And Goldman said, uh, I was sure this guy has something. When he was turning from amateur to pro, he was fighting first under a different kind of name. And there are yeah. people in forums suggesting that Marciano actually lost like earlier as a pro under a different name, if there's any kind of validity to that. I didn't find anything to that. He fought under um, Rocky Mac, I think, or some kind of other name. Yeah. The, uh, not only this is true, mm -hmm. he did something uh, he shouldn't. Now Marciano's fans are going to hate me, but uh, once you play pro, you cannot go back yeah, amateur. Yeah, just the game. He lied mm -hmm. and he did that. Just the way you said. He decided to give himself uh, a go, a try against the, the pro guys. And this fact uh, remained uh, undiscovered. Nobody knew about it until much later. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. But he did that. It's a lie and a lie will always be a lie. 